Hey guys, welcome back to our final day one round here at the Charlotte Regional Championship, round nine. I am finally joined here on the desk with Adam Doricott, the first time for yeah. this first round, or the first day here, and we got one final matchup. We have pulled some pretty cool names here. We've got Jalen Jones playing against Igor Costa with two pretty standard decks, two of some of the biggest decks we've seen coming into this I tournament. mean, looking down the list, uh, we all kind of know, I think, how Eagle plays. Obviously, yep. Eagle's just coming off on those regional championship wins mm -hmm. over in Costa Mesa in the expanded format. Yep. Changed away from the Garbodor and Dramper. It doesn't play quite as nicely in standard. Right. And he's known, I remember when he won his uh, Hartford regional with the Vulcanian list, all about consistency. Consistency, yep. consistency, consistency. Four of all the good stuff you need, and uh, <laughs> that's how you build a deck in right. Eagle's mind. And it, it works. And then uh, you can see it right here, right now. He's playing Buzzwell Lycanroc, and he just plays four of a lot of the same things. His trainer line is just four Max Hooks, or four Ultra Ball, four Choice Banks, four all the way down the line yeah. here, just straight consistency. Yeah, it's all about just having what you need, not trying to find these weird one ofs We go over to Jalen's list, he is playing a Zoroark Glycopod archetype. Mm -hmm. But then you look down his trainers and some of his kind of tech Pokemon, Little bit different in Very that. teched out. We see a Turtonator GX that helps him with the mirror matchup there. That Shell Trap hits for weakness and getting a crack back for 80 extra damage. Really helpful. Playing an Oranguru from the Ultra Prism with resource management helps in the mill matchups and in the mirror because more cards back. We'll see if that comes into play here. Playing ah, just one Cynthia, one Max Potion, which is really good in his deck. You can Max Potion Guzma in the same turn, reset your damage, and also knock out whatever you want. So, certainly these more particular options that are not necessarily, I'm going to do this every game, but I have this option available to me once when I want to pull it off. Yeah, and I mean, I think the good thing, you can get away with it in Zoroark. We've seen people play three Bridget. That's yeah. a lot of Bridget. You it don't actually need that many. And then the same vein, if Turtonage is not relevant in this matchup, because then Grass types are hit, let's trade fodder. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's an easy trade, so your deck, realistically, if you're in uh, his shoes, just, it's always going to be down maybe three, four cards that you don't need in the matchup, but you're going to have a thin deck and it's all going to be in your hands. Right, yeah, you either trade it away or you just put it on the bench and Turnator's extra 20 damage with right is beating, so uh, you always got some options there. <laughs> I, we'll don't, I don't want to leave it there as Guzma, <laughs> Guzma bait, but it's definitely something to Alright, uh, well it looks consider. like both players are going to have shuffled up and set up, so let's get on into the game here and we'll kick off round nine. Got Jalen on the right, Igor Costa on the left, Jalen has won the flip and is ready to go. We'll get this handshake off and players will begin round nine. Let's take a look at the prizes here. Igor's prizes, just a couple energies. Ah, nothing really too, too, too big here. One of his two rock roughs on Jalen's side. Two double colorless energies might come into play here. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to be very careful if he doesn't pull one out early doors of the prizes. Going to have to be using the double puzzle to get yep. it back, you know, making sure he keeps them alive. Uh, does get the Bridget right from the hand, though. No need to search for the Tapu Lele, one of which is actually prized, but mm -hmm. uh, both of them prizing one Tapu Lele, just a little, little yeah. aside. Yeah, so let's see that the uh, on Igor Costa side, he's going to start Mew from Fates Collide. He's actually playing two of these, and this is allow allows him to copy Buzzwell's attacks for the mirror match. It just gets a really clean knockout with a, a knuckle impact, and is only worth one prize, and so certainly has carried him through some mirror matches, I would imagine, to get to the 6-2 and two record. Not entirely sure how relevant it'll be here because Jalen doesn't play anything that's weak. Like yeah, I mean, it is a little hard, I think, to, to actually charge up a successful knuckle impact on a Mew, considering right. how low it is. But if you can get it into a position to, you know, come in really quickly, copy an attack and go, mm -hmm. then you're going to put yourself in a great position. Uh, the yeah. board's set up, though, by Jalen with the Bridget. Just two Wimpod, Zerua, and the Grass Energy down on the Wimpod. Igor's turn, though, not nearly as great. Attaches a Choice Band to the active Mew, <laughs> and it just plays Cynthia, and he... I mean, this is a deck, Igor's deck is Buzzwell Lycanroc, it does not play Bridget, so you don't need to necessarily look for that Bridget on the first turn. Cynthia is fine, but he needs to start drawing some basics and some energies right now, because you don't want just a lone Mew. That lone Mew can get knocked out very quickly. Yeah, I mean, we do see him actually pull into those basics, a Buzzwell and a Regirog, so he's not going to get donked easily on the next see, turn. Yeah, I Remoraid as well, that's certainly Yeah, I saw one. the Octillery, didn't see the Remoraid there, uh, but pretty much getting what you would like essentially off something like a Bridget right. anyway. It right. uh, does fall short on something like the Brooklet Hill. We do see Eagles having a decision here. There's an Ultra Ball in the back of his hand. Just wants to make sure before he plays it, it is going to be worthwhile. Just keep the hand to himself for this turn, actually. Yep. Jalen's going to draw another one of those Bridget. If he's got a Zorark in hand, so we very well might see that go ahead and be the trade fodder that you were talking about. Playing three Bridget is totally fine because it could just hit the discard pile and turn to two fresh cards. Going to yep. use a little counter there to mark that, hey, I've used trade, and Ooh, there it goes. It's yeah. the discard pile. Not Evo only Soda. Yeah, Evo Soda uh, just ready to go right there, you know, yep. able to 
start getting these Golisopods into play. And that's really what you want. Of course, you didn't have to work your way into getting that uh, Zerua out of the way. Or he could even go for the second Zoroark. Right. Another Zoroark would mean this is a double colorless energy. And he can go ahead and knock out the Mew. And Zoroark is certainly would not be in threat of getting knocked out because there's no energies on Igor's board yet. Yeah, there's actually been no attachment from Igor's first turn. So kind of maybe behind the curve once there. Yep. The Tapu Lele was the ultra rare in hand. It's going to help him find something to you know either switch the board around to start taking these knockouts or, you know, just get himself in a good position. To switch the board is his option, going for that lovely full art Guzma. Yeah, Guzma, really good play here. He's going to be able to pull up the Remoraid and knock it out. Leaves Igor's hand much drier than it was previously. Especially, he doesn't know it, but Igor does have the Octillery in hand. Exactly. So that's going to be a little bit hard. He is uh, mulling over the no. Parallel City. Doesn't play it. Actually brings Buzzwall into All the right. active. His first impression will do 120 damage. This Buzzwall Lycanroc deck does not play any healing cards. No Max Potion, no Acerola. So that damage will stick. But Jalen opting to not remove the draw power option and instead apply some pressure to Igor's attackers. We'll see how that ends up panning out for him because doing 120 to Buzzwell is certainly also a good move. Now we talk about Igor having a potentially dead hand. Uh, does actually pull the Professor Sycamore from the top of the deck in that one. And before he plays it, decides to Abyssal Hand first. Uh, does end up obviously with another Ultra Ball. Uh, so uh, the Ultra Ball is actually holding on to, I believe, next yep, to that. Yep. It has an energy Sycamore. in his hand. The energy is a little awkward for him because you don't really want to attach that to the Buzzwell and Jet Punch. It's just going to get knocked out. So he kind of just might have to Ultra Ball it away and go get another Buzzwell, or he might need to get Rocker up down on the board so that he can have access to the Bloodthirsty Eyes when he wants to activate that. Of course, always has to be careful because Lycanroc, weak to grass, very easy to get knocked out by first impression. Now we see the Ultra Ball discounting two Sycamore there. That uh, does leave me wondering a little bit about what is left in Eagle's hand. Right. Maybe pulling into all those Sycamores from the downsides. <laughs> I think a lot of players, uh, particularly with the addition of Cynthia in mm -hmm. Ultra Prism, kind of cutting down on that Sycamore count. Right. To see Igor, we know he likes consistency, but to see him with this many Sycamore and being this liberal with them, must feel pretty confident in his ability to, to keep going this turn. Yeah, Igor opting to play Ooh. four Sycamore and only two Cynthia here. Gonna go with his Guzma of his own in energy and knocks out Zorua. That is certainly a better energy, a better use of an energy attachment. Right, I mean, when he discarded the two Sycamore, I thought he must have another supporter, but Guzma getting him a prize, meaning he's going to have two cards in hand when he yep. comes in the next turn, but he's still got access to Abyssal Path. He yes. can still find the draw supporter. Exactly. So I think Eagle shutting down this potential Zoroark play is, is actually very smart. Yep, I mean, the prize card that he did draw there was a fighting energy, so he will have an attachment for the following turn. Over on Jalen's side, we'll see the Eva Soda goes and gets a second Golisopod GX, Certainly going to be Jalen's attacker of choice in the matchup because, well, it's not weak to fighting. Yeah, that's the big thing here is that Zoroark probably wants to stay on the bench. Does have to be careful if he benches another Zerua that doesn't just get jet punched again. Yep. Uh, like it did first time. And here we go. See the, the trading card game. Yeah. As it's so colloquially known from Jalen. <laughs> yeah, everyone's been saying this is Zoromon, the trading card game. And that's basically what we've been seeing all day. Zoro. I, don't know. I, think, I think one trade a turn is fair. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. Three's it's not... <laughs> a little silly. <laughs> Zorark certainly a dominant card here, and showing that pretty much every round we've had at least a Zorark deck. It's just such a powerful card. Uh, Jalen going to be employing Tapu Lele, another very powerful card. Wonder Tags, or a Guzma, which will activate First Impression. Now he's got options, because that First Impression knocks out everything on Igor's board. Yeah, I mean, the big thing as well for Jalen, in his hand, he's still holding that Parallel City, which he teased yeah. us with in the last turn. Right. Now, he's basically going to be able to pull up the... Here it is. This is a fantastic yeah. play. He pulls up the Regirock. This is going to be two free prizes, basically. But he's also got the option to just uh, make sure that the options are limited when it comes mm -hmm. to, to Igor, if he does decide to play it. Still holding on to Parallel City, actually. Um, but, hey, there's the knockout. There's that Regirock gone. Yeah, it's going to be an armor press as well, so he's going to reduce 20 damage. Igor going to go straight into Abyssal Hand for a fresh set of five cards. It feels so good when you drop five cards off of Abyssal Hand. Yeah, that's actually what, like, it's one of the best supporters around in basically a Pokemon. You yeah, just, uh, best support Pokemon. Make sure you've got a handful of cards already. Uh, looks like another Ultra Ball for Igor there, just wanting to keep on filling his bench up with all the things he needs. Right, he hasn't benched a Rock Rock at all yet, really kind of shying away from that. He has prized one, he does have one in the deck. And bench it and just kind of store it for 
when he needs it at some point. But uh, until this point, Igor deciding, I really don't want to risk it. But at this point now, it's time to start yep. you know, setting up just in case you need a bloodthirsty eyes. Turn. He absolutely has to right now as well because you know if he doesn't have the option to switch around, he is going to start just getting caught by all of these Pokemon on Jalen's side that are looking pretty much ready to go. Yeah. Um, you know, he's got a heavily damaged Buzzwall on the bench that is in danger. He does have the Watch and Learn Sudowoodoo, but that's, you know, that's a play for later, not for now. Right, that's something that you can use to maybe copy the Riotus beating if Jalen ever were to use it. It's not really great copying any of Glycopod's attacks because, well... And they just you don't you don't one shot it. It's, so. Well, the best thing is as well that Jalen has kind of on offer to him right now is he can be pretty wise about how he plays the first impression. Mm -hmm. So that Igor to play first impression has to make that switch with Suda Wooda. It's still got right, the same activation right, right. clauses, um, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, do I really want to be switching and goozering for a Suda Wooda watch and learn? Yeah, probably not. So that jet punch does do thirty damage to the active. So makes me wonder if Jalen. Did use first impression or armor press on the previous turn? Yeah, we don't really have any way of confirming that. Which one he did say? Oh, that is the. Realize it right there. It that was the armor press. Jet punch only doing ten damage to the active. Oh, another Guzma play. Guzma floatstone going to be another two prizes with this first. Actually, it will not be first impression. He can just use armor press again if he wants. Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't matter at this point. And now with all of these Pokemon on the bench, Eagle finally bringing his bench up to five. Uh, it's time. Mm -hmm. Parallel City hits hard here. Igor doesn't have really any obvious choices here. Yeah, I mean, if he gets rid of the Mew, I mean, the Mew, I think, is probably lacking a little bit here. Right. It's not even charged up, so that's going to be Igor's first takeaway. Octillery has to stay. Absolutely. And then Buzzle Buzzle's got to stay. stay. So now you're stuck between, do I go for the mm, Watch and Learn Sudowoodoo, meaning one of the Pokemon is now weak to grass right, yep. that you have on your board. <laughs> he's going to keep the Rock Rough so that he has access to Lycan Rock later, but he's hemorrhaging <laughs> prizes way too fast here. And he needs to start taking some back. And with Armor Press, that Glycopod has effectively 220 HP. Uh, Igor is going to need to use absorption with a strong energy here if he wants to get a knockout, and it's not in the cards yet. Yeah, I mean that armor press has caused such a problem. That parallel city not staying in play for long, immediately removed by the high count of Brooklyn Hill coming into play, and finally he gets to pull something up with the bloodthirsty eyes. Yeah, bloodthirsty eyes pulls up a Glycopod without any energies. Glycopod without any energy, certainly does not want to be in the active position. Only does thirty damage with that first impression. Igor saying. Uh, you just don't have Guzma. If you have Guzma, you beat me. He's yeah. going to copy the Jet Punch with the Mew, citing where the 30 damage goes. And, I mean, he uh, has slowly but surely been stacking up on this Zoroark, yep. but he's got to find a window to, to actually get that in the active and hit it with a Jet Punch. Right. Jalen draws here. Guzma will win him this first game. And go with the trade, digging for the Guzma. There's Discards, Bridget gone. Bridget, and it's not Doesn't there. look like a Guzma, that looked like a Sycamore to me, and that's yeah. not the supporter of choice. Maybe a Mallow, perhaps it was, but in any case, it's not Guzma. And I also don't know if he has even Acerola or a Floatstone in his hand, but he might actually be stuck here in the active position. It's not really what he would have expected. Jalen was really rolling through and applying a lot of pressure, and now kind of grinds to a halt with this uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes. Well, there's the ace roll that you were talking about. That is going to be the uh, ace roll that was in the active with 30 damage and no energy. Swapped out for this one with uh, 3 energy, a grass and double colorless, and only 10 damage down. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty good play there, I think, if you're in Jalen's shoes. Yeah. So you're just able to keep another knockout coming. Yeah. Wimpod comes back down. It makes you wonder how relevant the jet punch damage actually ended up being. And if it had been better for Igor to just pass, that way ace Rolla would not have been able to pick up that Golisopod because that 30 damage on the Zoroark. Maybe not necessarily relevant, and uh, you know, Acerola allows Jalen to continue to apply the pressure. Goes down to a single prize. He's uh, just one attack away from closing out game one. Yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty handedly. I mean, again, something like Guzma's gonna get him there. We know that it wasn't in his prizes, so it's not something he's just pulled up. He's gonna be limited to one trade. I think that having just that one sorrow work, although he. You know, there's been a couple of times we could have won if he had a card. Yeah. That's not really the biggest problem because you, you still have access to an extra two a turn. And, you know, it's not been the worst. He is, of course, with two Lele down on the bench. Uh, pretty much done with the Tapu Lele for a while until a, a space comes available, but not right, the biggest yeah. problem. Jalen really pushing the, the bench spaces that he has available to him to the limits, getting exactly what he needs out of each of those bench spots, saying, you know what, only one Zorark is fine. I can bench these two Leles. I've got everything else that I need. I still have space for it. Igor going to use Abyssal Hand, gets a Max Elixir. 
And fails it. No fighting energy there, so no luck. I mean, luck. He's, he's gone through a good amount of fighting energy. We have it? seen a fair bit of fighting energy. Well, actually, anyway. I think we won. Actually, yeah, it's only three. Yeah. So uh, he's got a fourth in his hand. Yeah, but I think he wanted to uh, do something. One of them has been discarded. He already had he had two at the beginning of the yep. turn. Uh, so he's going to be able to start double <laughs> memorating, uh, double artillerying. My apologies. I just wonder. How bad has his draw been if he's resorting <laughs> to the double octillery play? Yeah, it looks like uh, the other card in his hand is a Professor Sycamore. I think he actually Brooklet Hilled for that Remoraid this turn, so he's actually just discarding the octillery straight to the discard pile. Thinning it out. Thinning it out, doesn't want to see it. And now draws into some energies, there's a choice band there. He can knock out this Glycopod with the Buzzwall with the absorption, but what that does is it opens up Jalen to just have Mew double colorless Copyright is beating. It's for weakness. He gets a knockout there. He doesn't even need Guzma at that point. So Igor really in a tough spot, trying to find a way back into this game. Just not sure if it's there at this point. Well, I mean, if there's a Mallow in hand for Jalen, which, you know, it looked like there may be one. He did right. play the full ace roller. Right. You know, if that's in hand, it's it's pretty much done. He looks pretty chill, to be honest with you, about, <laughs> uh, about exactly what's going on. But. Yeah, Jalen typically a pretty, pretty relaxed guy. He's super cool. And so just really keeping his, his head level here and just methodically playing this game out. That is a full art mallow at the front of his hand. So he's going to be able to pull this off. So he plays yep. down the mallow, just goes and gets the Mew and the double colorless energy. Shuffles really quick. Igor kind of holding his hand, knowing that what is coming is going to be game winning. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, he has so many options here on, on how he wants to do this. Uh, but Mew double colorless, just, just the easy way. I mean, yep. It's just... Super yeah. simple. Igor not even cutting the deck, just knows those two cards are game winning. Jalen just going through the motions, drops the Mew, drops the double colorless energy, and Igor's going good. to concede game he one done to Jalen. Could have done it a few ways, actually. I mean, Mew double colorless is the classic, I think, right. in this matchup. Yep, absolutely. Could have done uh, Grass Energy Guzma with the Golisopod, just pull up that Remoraid, and <laughs> so many <laughs> options. Why did you go with the boring one? Right, well, you know, sometimes if you're playing a full art Mew, you just got to use it, right? As actually, the Guzman does not work because he had to play Mallow to get to it. So ah, that's uh, true. Have it. it has to have been the Mew, I suppose. But yeah. uh, in any case, you know, Mew really putting in the work that it's it's intended for. Knocking out Buzzwalls with double colorless energies. We've been seeing it all day. He didn't even have to get a double colorless. Actually, yeah, he could have gotten a grass and used first impression and styled on it that way, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, usually, the... usually you just see the double colorless and it copies right as beating. That's been yeah. basically across the board what Mew's uses have been. But in this deck, you can use first impression. Could have grabbed Mallow for the Guzma for next turn. Like I don't think Eagle was true. getting back into it. Also true. Yeah, he was forcing not, Eagle to uh, definitely not in danger of losing on the following turn. So uh, Jalen was definitely solidly in control of that match. And it might be just the, kind of the dynamic of how the match plays out. A lot of people I've seen tend to favor the uh, Buzzwell Lycanroc deck in some cases, but uh, Jalen's showing here. No, no, no. I hit. I hit stuff for weakness, man. And first impression well, and armor press, very good. I know running into this tournament, there was a huge discussion on it's, which is the best partner for Zoroark. And obviously, the joke is you can take four four Zoroark and just put it with whatever you please. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, guys, Potter emerges the top contender, and you can see why here because so many people go, well, Buzzwell best partners with Lycanroc, so I'm always hitting a good target. Oh no, it's been Guzman and hit for grass weakness. Right, it's right. not. It's a really tough matchup in that regard. And, yeah. You know, the smart play there by Jalen was just benching on Zoroa. Mm -hmm. you know, he did lose as a Rua. He may have been looking for two, but not filling it with these dark types, not right. getting knocked out easily. Really, right. really nice. All right, so we're going to go straight into game two here. Igor going to be going first. Starts <laughs> that Mew again. So, hey, starting a free retreater, certainly nice. Well, talking of starts, we do have to quickly look at uh, Jalen's start. The Oranguru for Ultra Prism. Yeah. Resource management is uh, pretty interesting, particularly if you're putting stuff back in. Uh, it's like... Putting it back in the deck, you may be able to grab it with trade. Uh, you know, if you shuffle your deck afterwards. Right. Yeah. That uh, that resource management kind of popularized a little bit by Russell Parr in Collinsville was the first to kind of show, hey, resource management in Zoropod, pretty good actually. And it does a couple things for you. It allows you to recycle Acerolas in the mirror match, and also just lets you kind of go infinite against mill decks. You just keep shuffling or keep putting energies on the bottom of your deck, even if they remove your energy from the active. You eventually will draw more energies off the bottom, and you'll continue that loop until they, they just never deck you out. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those kind of cards that's there to respect a, a rogue deck. Something, yep. I mean, I don't say rogue, but you know, you have these Hooper decks that yep. are just not going to let you do what you need. Sylveon. And, oh, Sylveon. <laughs> Sorry, you can smell the disdain in my voice at that one. Uh, but, you know, it is going to be one of those decks that you just have to have something to answer for, and yep. Oranguru is going to do fantastically at it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of being, having access to things, we have the prizes up there. We do see Cynthia 
Uh, Guzma and the Ace Roller all tucked away for Jalen. So those support lines slightly thinner than he might like. Um, but Eagle's prize is pretty kind of well balanced. Yeah, he's got two energy in there, but they are the basic energies. One of his rock roughs is gone, but um, Goose Choice Band Floatstone. He's got plenty of them because of the counts he plays. And that is the only Cynthia that Jalen plays, so that might end up coming into play at some point. But let's get into a little bit of what's going down in these opening turns. Igor's first turn, not great at all. It was very similar to his turn one in game one, where he didn't have any other Pokemon but the Mew and just played a supporter and shuffled and, hey, look, I drew a Remoraid, I guess. That's cool. Galen on the other side, definitely a Bridget deck. Doesn't have Bridget here, just has to bench Azora and play N. And those cards that he drew, not great at all. It's Grass Energy, Elisapot, and a Puzzle of Time, maybe, I that's, think it was. Uh, that's Bench Zerua Pass from yeah. Jalen. That's not looking too peachy. Assuming <laughs> Igor can grab the uh, Buzzball, which Hayes about to put down an Ultra Ball, right. he's going to be able to start getting himself in a good position. He's also got Choice Band in hand. He's got double Max if, looks like, as well. If anything manages to get involved, then it becomes a bit of a problem. Uh, yeah. He does have to consider right now he doesn't need the Choice Band because that's, they're obviously not right, GXs or GXs. Yep. But, you know, getting 60 down on this Orangaroo, 30 down on this Zoro would be huge for him right here. Yeah, he certainly can do that there. He's going to discard some pieces that he doesn't need to go get the Buzzwall. Puts the strong energy from his hand down onto it. He's going to be able to put down a lot of pressure. And actually, if he can find a Regirock... Yeah, that's... I mean, he's got the free Retreater in yeah. view. Mm -hmm. He is able to actually swing for 60 on this Orangaroo and really ramp up the pressure. Um, yeah, you can apply a lot of damage modifiers here with a strong energy and a Regirock EX. Jet Punch does 60 times 2 because Aranguru is weak. That would be 120 and actually oh, would knock him out. The whiff on the Max Elixir. If he hadn't discarded one, he may have had another shot at it. But we yep. did see him pull the Regirock out. So we know it's not prized and he knows it's not prized now. Sure. Um, but he's going to just uh, <laughs> go for it with the Sycamore. All right, let's see if we have an out to Regirock. That would be very strong here. He's going to draw his 7 oh, cards. He's got... I saw another Max Elixir, so that is some potential gas. Ooh, I did see the uh, Octillery come out, so All right, so gonna maybe have the some option. More, more options there to draw. There it is. He's going to be able to at least thin his hand down a little bit. There's one. Six. Max Elixir does hit. Goes to the other Buzzwall. Spreads his energies around. Seems fine to me. He's got one energy now on three separate attacking Pokemon. Three different Jet Punchers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's a Jet Puncher the rest of the game. Yeah, he does have another Strong in hand, so you know he can start ramping up the damage a little bit. Uh, not down, just one. quite there. Uh, that looked like it was not an out to Regirox. So that looked like another support to me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be Jet Punch for just the 60. He's going to save the special energy one onto the bench and instead just go aggro with the basic energy Jet Punch. Well, that, I mean, that one on the bench is ready for the incoming Zoroark, basically. Right. To say, hey, if you do manage to get it up there, I'm now going to be able to hit you for Choice Band and Strong. For a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, yeah right now that Jet Punch should be doing 160 damage, which... Pretty close for that knockout with the yeah, Regirock again. Especially, yeah, I mean, with that 30 down already on the Zerua, he is going to get there with the Regirock. Yep. Just needs to get an out to it, and right. that's something that... I mean, he's got two energy in hand, so he's going to be able to drop it down by one. Got a Guzma I see in there as well. He does have to leave that bench space open, though, so Pokemon aren't going to help him here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Jalen going with a Lele into Bridget. Didn't get it turn one. Turn two, uh, it's okay. But the question is, does he have an out to his Zoroark GX? He does not. Igor can play that Guzma in his hand, pull up one of those Zoroa and Jet Punch and knock out both of the Zoroa on the board, leaving Jalen with no no draw power at all. Yeah, an Evo Soda or a Ultra Ball will do it for him. I think it's an Evo Soda in the back there from P Penultimate Card. There it yep, is. There it is. There's the out. Okay, so, so he is at least going to be able to start playing yeah, the Zoroa trading card. If you're Jalen here, you feel a little bit more comfortable that you can get this evolution off. You, you're not at risk of getting both of your Zoroas knocked out. But like we were saying, if Igor has access to a Regirock EX, he can still knock out that Zorark with just a Jet Punch. Yeah, I mean, he's probably going to pick up the Oranguru this turn. It doesn't look like Oranguru is going to be getting out that active anytime soon. Right. Uh, no Float Stones, that's the first trade. When the Grass Energy is gone, and a Puzzle of Time is one of those two. Uh, does inspect the discard, probably not ready. It looked like a double puzzle <laughs> right. that he pulled off that trade. Yeah, double puzzle, certainly not great on the second turn of the game. You haven't gone through any resources yet to really recover, so definitely clogging his hand up right now. Let's go. Over to Igor's turn. He's got a strong energy in his hand. He's just pulled three cards out. Ooh, looks, he's mulling it over. Considering an Ultra Ball, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that Regirock's going to be huge. It looks like he's pulled the Ultra Ball right off uh, yep. this turn. So, off the top of the deck, where better to locate it? <laughs> just mulling over what to discard with it. Right, That's yeah. going to be the big decision. There's a for lot him. of good cards in his hand well, that he would not want to. He's got a Guzma in the hand as well. Yep. 
Uh, there's the Ultra Ball just cutting Sycamore and the energy. So, I mean, Jalen kind of looking down at that Sorowak, hoping, <laughs> hoping it gets treated better. There's yeah, the Regirock. Regirock EX. With that Guzma, now, he just, Igor doesn't even need to commit any more energies to the Buzzwell with the strong energy and the choice band. It already gets the knockout. He can put that another energy, like a strong energy, on something else and saying, hey, I'm only committing one energy to my active. So if you have the Mew double colorless response, I still have a lot of energy stored on my yep, bench. It, there it is. There's the Guzma play. He's actually going to bring up the Mew. Yeah, that's going to be a free retreater. One. He'll just retreat with that. I'd yeah. be very surprised if he uh, did not do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's going to Abyssal Hand for four. That's a nice Abyssal Hand there. Yep. There's a free retreat. Retreat. That Jet Punch doing 180 damage for one energy. Moves that 30 damage counter just down to the Zoro on the bench and says, hey, you better evolve this or this is going down too. And if you do, I can do the exact same thing I just did again. Yeah, I mean, these Zoroarks, we see why he only played one in game one. It just, mm -hmm. It's not safe against these Buzzwall decks. And that's why people include the Red Jarrah, because it helps you hit the numbers a little right. bit easier. Looks like Jalen may just be giving up the Oranga, <laughs> hoping there's no more Guzma come in. Yeah, without having access to Enhanced Ooh. Tamer, that is a tech card Jalen does Unless not I'm very play. much mistaken, uh, Igor actually took a Guzma off his two prizes. Oh wow, yeah he does, he has a Guzma in his hand He's right now. right on the front there. He's set up to do the exact same thing. Here's the double puzzle for Zorark and the Evo Soda. So he's going to be able to also establish a Golisopod GX. That is certainly going to be useful for Jalen, but without a Float Stone, doesn't really mean much yet. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be going in uh, to find the Golisopod with the Evo Soda, then just manually evolve into the Zoroark from hand. Yep. But again, that Guzma from Igor is just going to be able to clean him out, just skittle him out from the bench where he thought he was safe to start trading. And most importantly, Igor, again, will not have to be committing any more energies to this active Buzzwall. He can continue to power up the Buzzwall on the bench and just say, hey, now I can knock out a Lele with this, and you really don't have any sort of options to answer it because Jalen doesn't even play Enhanced Hammer. Yeah, I mean, the big thing here, though, is Jalen really wants to find uh, the Guzma, because then he may be able to grab this Reggie Yeah. That's sure. what he has to do this, this max turn. Max Potion, also critical. Ooh, that singular Max Potion he plays and is coming in handy. He's hit so <laughs> much from these this trade. Wow. All right. First impression takes two free prizes off of that Regirock EX. Jalen kind of just immediately establishes himself back in this game. Yeah, he hit everything he needed in that turn, uh, basically put himself in a great position. Uh, the one thing I just really, really like there is he establishes, even though Regirock has no energy on it, it is the threat. Yep. And that's what he needed to get rid of. That numbers, especially after the max potion, just aren't there for Igor mm -hmm. without committing and powering up a Buzzwall. As I say that, Choice Band is. and the fighting <laughs> energy on the Buzzwall on his bench. And he will consider that Guzma for Zor he could also, let's see here, the, the um, right, Knuckle Impact does 210 damage. He could go just for the Golisopod and leave that Zorark for later when he has less damage modifiers. Yeah, I mean, a couple of options there. We do see he's uh, also not played any of his uh, GX, so Absorption GX is, is yep. there, but he's already That's taken the prizes. So it's... That's true. Yeah, he might he... want to leave the uh, Dangerous Rogue option well, available. Well, I mean, he has that option, but he could, you know, if he, he grabs something like the Zorowak, then decides to absorption, then he's ready to knuckle impact the next turn for all the damage. Uh, assuming, of course, that he's not able to get knocked out. Is... Yeah, he doesn't even have to play Guzma here. He actually can just knuckle impact or absorption. Either would work. Knocked out this Glycopod. Must be what he's considering now is, which one do I want to use? He's just going to go with the knuckle impact, save the GX attack, saying, you know what? I still value Dangerous Rogue GX. Yeah. Go back over to Jalen now. Back on the back foot. Mew EX, double colorless floatstone would be a good set of cards here. Ooh, well, he is going to find uh, Tapu Lele. May help him uh, line up there, but he's found the Tapu Lele after the trade. So the right. traditional Mallow trade technique exactly. isn't going to be paying off this yep. time. He's going to have to go for a draw supporter, and he's prized the Cynthia. Ooh. So he has no great draw supporter option. Going to go with the field blower, remove some choice bands. That's certainly helpful. Yeah, they really do swing the numbers, especially, you know, but they swing the numbers better, I think, for the Glycopod, which you just need Right. Right. Um, it definitely helps because you're not hitting for weakness. As soon as you're over, uh, basically, 100, 110. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Zoroark's yep. done for. Jalen now realizing that one of Prize Cynthia really hurting him. He's going to have to go with the end and only draw four cards here. But at least Eagle's down to two. He does get to a Bissell hand up to five. But for a brief moment, for a brief moment, he is. Eagle does have two cards in <laughs> That's hand. That's right. Let's see. Jalen could rip some really good cards here. He could still get Mew double colorless. And there's a Mew double colorless energy. Not no that. Energy. Not in the hand. Four Pokemon. That was so close to being very good. Again from Jalen. He will concede the game. We'll go to game three. 
Yeah, he, he knows exactly what's coming. I think right. Igor, he reliably, is going to be able to find a Guzma. Right, only uh, two prizes left. It's pretty easy to close out. Yeah, it's yep. not going to be a problem. He knows he's just too far behind. Jalen wanting to have the time for game three in case we do get a bit of a slower game. Right, yeah. And both of these players now one game away on their winning in match from making it into the day two. Igor trying to make a case for, I could win back-to-back -back regional championships. I just won in Costa Mesa in the expanded format. Now I can show you, hey, I'm going to win again in the standard format here. Igor, no stranger to winning regional championships. He could win another one here. He can start making a case for the best of the game currently. I mean, in the game currently, I know his overall regional championships, uh, he's going to have to match up with some bigger numbers. Yes. There's people out there running around with seven, <laughs> seven regionals. Seven regional championships. Yeah, you've got, a, got some catching to do there, Igor. But at the same time, you know, two back-to-back -back in two different formats right. is a, a really top level of yeah, play. Yeah, this is by no means to downplay the accomplishments that Igor has. He's definitely one of the best players the game has ever seen. Trying to get back-to-back -back regional championships, I don't think there are very many, if any, players that can actually say that I've done that. So yeah. Both players are going to shuffle here. We're going to go into a very comfortable game three. Have enough time. The fist bump of good manner. Oh. See, so it might be a mulligan from no. Oh, final card is Tapu Koko, and he has an Ultra Ball in his hand, so he can get the Bridget off with a free retreater in the active position. So it's certainly a good start for Jalen. Well, one of his uh, Zoroark is going to be prized. One of the Zaru is going to be prized, uh, but the Bridget's going to be really, really big there. I mean, he does. Here to be lacking that double colorless energy for kind of turn two, but he's going to have the option to, to start looking right. for it. Yeah, and Igor starts once again for the third game in a row. Mew in the active. Mew and with the 50% uh, the <laughs> win rate. That's right. And has prized three fighting energy, which means those max switchers might be a little bit more difficult to hit. We've only got three of them to pick from. One of them is also in the exactly. prizes. Exactly. Now, we did see Natalie Champagne in a previous round have exactly the same prize as three basic energies and, a, and one max elixir and still was able to hit all of our max elixirs very cleanly. So we'll see if Igor Costa can do the same as he starts to play out this final game of day one with yeah, Charlotte I mean, Regionals. This new you know, Fates Collide view that we've been talking about is, is interesting because yeah, it's maybe like a one-off in some decks. The fact he's really gone in with two yeah. means he is trying to use it for just jet punch with a one prize attacker. Yep. That's a big thing. I will say Igor's hand here. Uh, is going to have to probably Ultra Ball here. Um, that's the only thing. It looks like it's just full of items and supporters right now. Yeah, I see a Guzma in his hand, kind of shielding the others. There is an Ultra Ball, so it is a live hand. You can go get a Tapu Lele, or he's going to just get Buzzwall and some energies. He does have energy in his hand, I believe, right? Yeah, I mean, now he's got the Jet Punch available to him. He can start Jet Punching with Mew. Uh, the only weird thing here is, you know, Tapu Koko would actually rather, or I guess Eagle would rather jet punch the Tapu Koko with Buzzwall. Right, exactly. Uh, for, for the weakness. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hitting for weakness, doing the 60 means now it's a two shot, but I don't see an energy in his hands. So he's going to have to Cynthia and try and draw into it. Uh, he's going big on the Cynthia. It needs to be hitting strong energy Regirock. Right. Uh, oh, that would be incredible. <laughs> strong energy Regirock would be insane. It'd be the same, it's the same situation as the previous game, where that Tapu Koko has the same amount of HP as the Orangaroo. If he hits, all of the cards necessary to knock it out. That's an incredible amount of pressure for Jalen to have to answer. Uh, well, we're lacking uh, strong energy there and uh, also a Regirock. Yeah, so, I, uh, I, that's... <laughs> there is a Brooklyn Hill. He can get the Regirock, but he still has no strong energy. The best that he can do is play that Max Elixir and try and get a regular fighting energy onto the Buzzwall, but it's not going to be a knockout. Yeah, he's not going to quite get there as well. So, kind of disappointing, I guess, if you're in Igor's shoes, you're not going to be able to to make it all the way there. He does Ultra Ball and Brooklyn Hill at the same time, for those right. of you wondering why he grabbed two off of Brooklyn Hill. Um, <laughs> but you know, knowing that he's going to fall short of that big turn one knockout, just setting up for the rest of the game. Right, exactly. Going to take a more conservative route here instead of trying to get the Regirock out, just saying, you know what, I'll get some pre-evolutions on the board and try and set up into the mid-game that Ooh, way. Hits that, the Max Elixir, so yeah. that is definitely good for Igor. Yeah, it does accidentally reveal an end to his opponent. No big deal, though. It's uh, Max <laughs> Elixir, he's not drawing it for no apparent reason. Right, right. Um, but, you know, that's what you need to get going here. Right, applying just any sort of pressure onto this Coco. I mean, this Jet Punch will do 60 damage to the active and still 30 to one of the Zoroas, so that is good for Igor. Well, we did see the Zoroas, actually. That 30 damage being put down on them was essential. And some yeah. of those early knockouts for Igor last game. He's mulling it over. He does know the wind pod is probably coming up with that energy on it right. to start hitting him. So he's just mulling over he wants to, but no, one of the Zeroes is going to take the damage instead. Yeah, going to try to follow through the uh, game two scenario that he had built up. Trying to get that to happen again. And Jalen once again going to answer the jet punch 30 onto Azora with an Evo Soda to immediately evolve that Pokemon. 
Yeah, I mean, he has the option to, to grab either Zoroark or Golisopod. If it does go Zoroark, maybe holding one in his hand or maybe just confident that the trade's going to be enough for him. Right, yep. Trade's certainly a good ability and has gotten a lot of players there before. So we'll see how Jalen's turn continues to build out here. Moving around his cards. Doesn't have an energy in his hand yet. He has another Zoroark as well. So all right, these two all Zoroarks as well. on the board already. And it looks like there's a Golisopod on the front. Uh, oh no, my, my apologies. He trades the Field Blower, draws two more cards that are not had access to Golisopod yet. Trades oh. a Bridget. The Grass Energy. It's grass the right energy. color, but it's not the right Pokemon. Right. So. That's a draw support. It was ah. an Ultra Ball for the Glycopod. Okay. Yeah, he's fill, filled up his hand, right. so you know, he is going to be able to start discarding things. One of those Grass Energies he pulls from trade. And the other Zoroark, so it looks like he's going to be playing this game with just the two Zoroark in play. And see now, what would have been really neat here is with those Grass Energies, if he could have gotten the Mew EX, he could have first impressioned with that Mew EX and got the knockout here. Yeah. Funny little uh, you know, a trick that you can do. And you know, maybe exposing that Mew EX to the Mew on Igor's bench, but he's going to go with the Guzma here and take away Igor's draw power. Yeah, that's something that Igor really actually did so well off in game two. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you shut <laughs> off the Re Remoraid into artillery play when you just hit Sycamore, discarding another Sycamore. Yep. Igor are going to draw seven fresh cards, as a Max Elixir, some Pokemon in there. Definitely some options available to him at this point. Uh, none of them really involve knocking out this Golisopod yet, though. He's going to have to soften it up with a Jet Punch or something, try and get a two-shot set for him in the following turn. Yeah, he is um, eyeing up his, his hand here. Does have another Max Elixir in there, so he could try his luck again. Uh, Eagle very, very, I'd say conservative. Yeah. And when he plays an Ultra Ball, you always see him pull it to the front of the hand and then very cautiously decide what to discard. Right, you can really see the the skill that Igor can display and just how particular he is with every little micro decision he has to make. Finally deciding on the Rock Ruff and the Cynthia going to the discard pile. He then checks he his hand. The N and the Guzma in hand. Right. Uh, so interesting enough, you know, I, I believe it's N, Guzma, and uh, Max Elixir. Um, either that or I just miscounted the supporters, but you know. It looks to be about the case here. Going through his deck, deciding what Pokemon he wants to take out. It might be another Remoraid. As he pulls it to the front, he really wants that Octillery. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> I mean, you can get out of it once with a Sycamore, but if you discard your Professor Sycamore to do so, right. then uh, you you're know, running out of supporters. You're running out of the big supporter. You're then forced to end. Like, it's not ideal. I mean, he will get the advantage. Uh, Jalen is down to just five prizes. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's not quite as big a play as Enter One. Right, and so here comes down the Remoray. Definitely going to be uh, necessary, considering he also discarded another supporter in that Cynthia in order to access that through the Ultra Ball. Getting down the Remoray can still play this Max Elixir if he so chooses. It might go to that Sudowoodo. Yeah, that's why he benches it down first. There's mulling over there it is. And Max Elixir does hit is. a basic energy, so now he can choose either Sudowoodo or the Buzz will, or it could even go to Rockruff if he wants Dangerous Rogue to be an option in the near future. Yeah, I mean, this is such a kind of tentative play, I think, from Igor. Uh, taking his time, does just go with the Buzz wall, so he's swinging right. with one big boy attacker right now. Yeah, so it's going to be a retreat into the Buzz wall in order to do the... Actually, no, it's going to be a pass. Here we go. Igor playing around Acerola. Yeah, he, know, he saw what happened in uh, an earlier game, saw the kind of problem it, it caused him. Jalen very tentative for this, and he has every right to be. Right. Yes, he has double puzzle available to him, but he did also discard the Zoroark, and you probably don't want to double puzzle this early. Does force the N, Eagle is going to play that anyway, but smart play there from Jalen, knowing he's discarded one, remembering what he saw when he was in the deck earlier, yep. but hey, I'm down to just the two Zoroark yep. that I have on the bench. Attaches the float stone to the active Golisopod, which means there will be no first impression this turn. He could draw double colors and go with an armor press, but then he could get return knocked out by an absorption GX. Ooh, if only he played down that Zerua. <laughs> Pulling double puzzle right off the top there. That starts the trades, though. It's, it's Trades pretty... away another Bridget. Doesn't need those anymore. I don't see double colorless yet. It's something he definitely wants to Ooh, draw here. The Orangaroo is gone, and it's a grass energy, grass not energy. a double colorless. <sighs> Not exactly what Jalen needs in this moment. No, he needs something a little bit different. He can't use anything on that. I mean, any attack right now yeah. with the basic lack of double colorless. He's already played his supporter for the turn. Might be time for some resource management. <laughs> yeah, Coming with the double puzzle. Pulling. Get it in there. <laughs> yeah, pulling some po uh, some cards from the discard pile with puzzle and then attaching an energy Ooh. and resource managing. Putting more into the deck. 
Let's see what two cards he decides to grab. Guzma, certainly a good one. Can't play it now, but in the future turns, definitely a strong card. Also gets an Ultra Ball. Hmm. Wouldn't expect the Ultra Ball to come out there. Right. Obviously trying to set up something for a little bit later, maybe uh, another one of these Wimpod, Glycopod combos. But yeah, or maybe saying, hey, I might need to get Mallow out of the deck with this Ultra Ball. Grab the Lele. Lele. Yeah, I mean, that would be good. Big thing he's got to be worried about, though, if you make all these commitments to getting your Mallow into your hand that you can't play immediately, right. Eagle just ends. You've just right. wasted so many resources. Yeah, I think, you know, now I think about this, this is probably going to be a Wimpod, because if this Glycopod gets knocked out by an Absorption GX, Jalen's only attacking option is Zorar, or Flying Flip. Flying Flip is not relevant really at all, so he's going to have to get that Wimpod in, that is what he decides to do, so that if he is to get Absorption, he can still follow up with another First Impression. Yeah, I mean, that's what he, he wants to be able to kind of keep those going, yeah. and then, you know, late game, pick it up on the Rock Rock, pick it up on the Pseudo Voodoo and stuff, right. you know, it's, it's one of those plays that he has to be careful of, and that's exactly what he's doing, the Zoroarks are just going to sit on the bench, they're not coming into the active yep. slot. Max potions the Coco, he's going to probably retreat into that Coco, and pass the turn, Trying to protect those Glycopods as much as he possibly can. Yep, well here's the first Max Elixir is going to be successful. This yep. Buzzwall's online to Absorption or Knuckle Impact. Absorption's still an option and it's early in the game. We do see the Octillery in hand. We can see Igor's pace really picking up here, starting to realize oh, oh, there's still a lot of he's prizes He's also left. got the uh, Lycanroc GX in hand it looks yep. like, so he's just ready to pull something into the active and I got a bad feeling about this Galisopod that's yeah, sat there. Yeah, that Galisopod might get absorption right to the face. He could Guzma as well, both are valid options here. He doesn't yep. need another supporter, so the Guzma seems better. Go ahead and just do a clean 240 and hey, that's enough. You get yep. knocked out. He also gets another buzzword down on the bench. with a choice band. I'm gonna drop uh, three as well. Oh, there's some strong energies. That's helpful. Ooh, that's really nice from there. He hasn't attached this turn. The strategy going on the suit of Woodoo, ready for a big watch and learn. Yeah, that's gonna be a good watch and learn. If he ever gets hit with a, uh, a right is beating, he just says, hey man, I'm gonna attach another energy. Watch and learn. I'll show you how to right is beating. Well, the chances of him getting hit with the right is beating become more and more likely as you see less and less Galizapod just as I say that. What does he grab off the trays? <laughs> Glycopod. Trades even away the Sud or the uh, Evo Soda saying, I don't need this. Glycopod's already in my hand. Now Jalen really wants to also find Mew EX. If he can get a Mew EX, knock out this Buzzwolf in one shot with either the first impression or the right is beating, that would be the play. Yeah, I mean, he's emptying his hand right down here, getting the Wimpod in to try and stream those Glycopods. You have to wonder though, we see one in the discard, uh, one he actually discarded to Ultra Ball earlier, so then yep. he's going to be forced into a double puzzle play. He's going to go with the Guzma, Ooh. pulls up the Sudowoodo, says, you're not going to watch and learn any time today. First impression, gets that knockout, and uh, this guy spot, not in danger of being knocked out at all. Yeah, that's really, really nice for him there, to be able to make that play. His supporter, just very narrow, like, scope of field, he just right. wants to stop an immediate pseudo-woody yep. retaliation. Yeah, really the only danger that this uh, Glycopod has to worry about is a strong energy, Max Elixir, Lycanroc. So that he, actually no, Dangerous Rogue is not available because Igor's already absorption, so there's yep. really just no way that that, that, that uh, Glycopod goes down. Yeah, I mean the big thing here, the Ultra Ball, heading on into the deck there for uh, the Igor, uh, making sure he can fill up, just get the Reggie Rock Regirock once all that is. damage. All right, 10 more damage that these Buzzwolves are going to be doing. Actually, with a strong energy and a choice band, he would be committing a fourth energy to that Buzzwolf, but that would be enough to knock out the Golisopod. I wonder if that's something he'd want to commit to, though. It doesn't look uh, like an option at this point for you. No, he's just going to take two prices off the Zoroark. He's yep. been holding on to that Lycanroc for a, a rainy day, um, just making sure he can make that switch. And actually just bring it up for Jet Punch. Oh yeah, punch. the Jet Punch is going to be a knockout because of that 30 damage. That's what that Red Rock GX, or the Red Rock EX yep. is for. Making that play we were looking at in game two, once again, really showing at that 30 damage on Zoroark, very relevant. Yep, and also he's softened up the Golisopod. Yep. That's really nice from there with the Red Rock and, and obviously, you know, he does have access to Knuckle Impact. Mm -hmm. Would fall a little bit short without the strong energy, uh, wouldn't quite be there, but at least it's kind of opening a door for him. Yeah, and he puts Jalen in a really tough spot here because Jalen's still kind of looking to make that Mew EX play, but if he uses Mew EX to knock out this Buzzwolf, the bench Buzzwolf can just come up, knuckle Nickel impact, impact, and game's over. That's Jaylen, actually not a play for him. Jalen also needs a Guzma to knock out the bench Buzzwolf instead of the active one. That's the only way that he could use the Mew and not immediately just lose the game on the following turn. So we see him attaching the Choice Band to Galisopod, recognizing I might need to just attack with this. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those options he's going to have to consider. Uh, we did see him, of course, 
trade away one of the ace rollers earlier on and we see the other one hidden in his prizes. Right. So that's not an option for him right now. That's not a play he can make. Uh, he is going to have to just goose him up with this Reggie Rock. Reggie Rock comes active. Try and grab the prizes and first, first impression. impression. Let's see. Igor playing fast. He's got Guzma. The game there is it over. Is. Igor Costa squeaking out a very close winning in match. Goes up to 7-2, and two, and he might be well on his way of winning back-to-back -back regional championships. Yeah, I mean, he's got the points. He's got those uh, 21 match points that yep, you need. that's right. And 21 is the cutoff, I've been told, for day two That's as right. Well. That's right. These large regionals here, always pulling so many masters, means you got to have those 21 match points if you want to make it to the second day. And uh, Igor, Igor got there. Jalen, very close. Almost was able to pull it out, but in the end... <laughs> Buzzle's a really good card, man. I mean, Buzzle's really good, especially when you keep hitting Guzmas, and if you're falling short of a Guzma, you just block yep. the eyes. Yep, absolutely. It's basically like having extra switching in the deck. You know, he's got four Guzma, he's got up to two Lycan Rock. Mm -hmm. That's six, like, basically Pokemon catches yeah, at and, this point. Yeah, and you're playing those, uh, that 2 2 Octillery as well. Just keeps fueling the deck. You draw a lot of cards really fast. It's just a very aggressive variant. If you hit those Max Luxors, you can do anything. Yeah, it's so consistent as well. I mean, the, the amount of times when you can just Guzma bring up the Mew yep. and then and then keep going, seems to work out well. We were questioning the Fates Point Mew at the beginning, but see exactly why it works. Definitely, definitely putting in some work there. Well, that's going to do it for day one here at the Charlotte Regional Championships. We will see you guys on day two. We will be posting on our Twitter account when we will be going live. So we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning.